Hi guys, this is Dr. Margolin. Welcome to our channel. If, you, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe so we can keep you safe and healthy. Uh, the question we got today is about sugar. And it's not about sugar and diabetes, which is obvious and there is a lot of material on YouTube. And it's not sugar and biochemistry of sugar, even though we talk about that a little bit. It's a connection between sugar, chronic pain and addiction. And uh, this is a very complex question. Uh, which is almost impossible to review within the, the framework of the short videos we make. So what we decided to do will bring you some um, uh, insights, some points that you can uh, review, you can Google, you can discuss, get back to us if you agree or disagree um, with uh, what we presented. And we also present some of our clinical experience for about 20 years we deal with chronic pain and arthritis. And um, um, obviously, um, each case is are unique. And uh, please, before you change anything, talk to your provider. Without further ado, let's talk about sugar. Sugar is a combination of two substances called glucose and fructose. And they both increase the levels of certain inflammatory markers, meaning increase inflammation uh, in the body through the enzyme called JNK1, maybe through other pathways such as C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor called TNF, and interleukin 6, 8, uh, and maybe others. Um, so inflammation is the major contributor to chronic pain. It basically ma makes the pain worse. And as you know, everything which is called itis, like radiculitis, bursitis, arthritis, um, or if you just talk about not necessarily joint or pain, um, or chronic degenerative pain, you talk about colitis in your belly, it's all related to inflammation. So obviously, anything that would increase inflammation would increase your pain. And that could be that simple, but it's not. There are other... Um, Pathways. There are other ways that sugar increases your pain. Um, sugar is stored in your body and can be used for short or for short intense exercise. But uh, sugar can also go to mitochondria to TCA cycle and metabolize to citrate that can uh, metabolize into acetyl CoA and uh, become something we call very low density lipoprotein VLDL, which is basically in plain words, bad fat that can go into your blood and, or, and cause what we call high, high cholesterol with cardiovascular effect, um, with the uh, effect on your body, with basically gaining weight, increasing fat. And um, it can also develop as lipid droplets inside the cells. Um, which basically not only increase the total body fat and the estimate is that if you drink, for example, one can of soda, mostly Coke a day, um, you get 15 pounds of fat a, in a year or more. Um, and this is for small, for small cane, for bigger bottles, it's, it's more, but it's also sh uh, shuts down your metabolism. Your, your cell can be in two mode, in the metabolic mode or storage mode. And when you load it with fat, it actually, it actually, slow, it actually slows metabolism and um, uh, basically um, causes it more difficult for you to burn the food, burn the calories that you get. And this is why you see a lot of people on high sugar diet. And by the way, if you don't want it or your sugar studies show that an average American consumes between 20 to 40, 40 teaspoons of sugar a day because of how much sugar industry adds to your food. And it's not only something that's called sugar, high fructose, corn syrup, um, also sugar. And there are other names the industry chooses for sugar. Um, this person has hard time to exercise and to be active. And that has direct impact on arthritis as well. We see a lot of people who are not only overweight, but because of metabolic switch, it's hard for them to um, exercise. And that's why they keep gaining weight. And that's how it makes arthritis worse. Um, because just for a simple mechanics, if you have more weight on a sick joint, it will hurt more and you will be less functional. And that's why it is extremely important 
to break this vicious cycle at some point. And one of the ways you can do it in our experience is just by, by uh, decreasing um, sugar consumption and replacing sugar with uh, healthy options. And again, it's not only cane sugar you put in your tea, it's sodas, um, it's all types of sweets, it could be salad dressing, could be yogurts. And by the way, um, the increase in, sh increase in sugar was connected to something called low-fat diet. If you remember in early 80s, around 1982, um, American Medical and Heart Association came out with something called low-fat diet. Low-fat diet is not that tasty. The, the food is not that tasty and industry started to load it with sugar. And that's why our sugar um, consumption went up and that actually could be even worse than um, a same versus high high fat. In addition, fructose can metabolize to something called uric acid, which uh, causes additional damage and increases blood pressure and increases uh, cardiac complications. So you may ask, it's all good as well. What does it mean uh, specifically for me? So I like this movie called The Sugar Movie. This is David, he's an Australian journalist, and he replaced his uh, 2300 calorie diet, um, which was, more plant-based with sugar. And in 18, one eight, 18 days, um, he gained some fat in the belly, he developed um, fatty liver, uh, and he increased his um, cardiovascular risk. Just look at those numbers. He, his fat increased 4%, he gained 8.5 kilograms just in 18 days, one eight days. And when he tried to stop sugar, he developed withdrawal. In the second part of this video, we'll discuss what can be done and how you can you replace the sugar. So in the second part of this video, we're going to talk about what can you practically do. Again, I think this is an, an, an excellent example. What can happen to you just within 18 days? How much more so if all your life you, you didn't observe the amount of sugar you got? Now, the simple answer is, okay, I'll stop it. Uh, unfortunately, sugar is an addictive substance that can uh, activate the same parts of the brain that some um, other addictive substances can activate. It's not maybe that immediately destructive to you um, as let's say cocaine, but it can activate nucleus accumbens and other dopaminergic uh, parts of your brain. So you can develop real withdrawal if you stop sugar, that actually, happened to this fellow, he developed withdrawal. So how you deal with that? I think the best way to deal with, sh with uh, um, sugar withdrawal and getting off sugar is by supplementing sugar, supplementing sugar. And um, there are two, two ways to supplement it. This is called monk fruit sweetener. I have no commercial interest. You can go choose your own company, but monk, monk fruit sweetener, this one combines erythrol and um, monk fruit, I don't think it's you, anybody should abuse that, but it, they say it has zero glycemic index. It, could, it looks like sugar, it tastes almost like sugar, and you can bake with it, you can put it in your tea or coffee, as long as you use it in moderation. I basically recommend my patients to have one sweet moment a day if, they are very, if they're really addicted to sugar, and maybe every other day if they're not so dependent or addicted to sugar. The other, um, the other way to, to replace sugar is using combination of stevia monk fruit. Uh, this one is called whole earth, but you can yeah, get, get pure stevia if you uh, like the, the way it tastes. It's also a very safe way to supplement sugar. Uh, big mistake is to use a diet products. Diet sodas um, uh, are not safe and we don't recommend patients to use them, but we recommend increased water intake and doing something called infusion drinks, meaning um, you take seltzer, you take pure water, you can't fruits of your choice like uh, stevia or, uh, sorry, like uh, lime or lemon or any fruits of your choice. You mix it with stevia or monk fruit and create a drink. Uh, most sugar actually is in sodas. Um, I'll tell you one number that can help you to monitor your sugar intake. Four grams of sugar is roughly one teaspoon. So when you get Sprite and you see 60, 60 grams of sugar per serving, it means that there are 15 teaspoons per in each cup or more. Uh, Coke is about roughly nine and uh, other, other carbonated commercial beverages are in between. There is a lot of sugar in anything that says low fat usually. High fructose or corn syrup is basically sugar. 
of common question can i use honey uh, maybe a very small amount honey is also sugar but uh, maybe better quality another question i was talking about fructose it's, it comes from fruits what about fruits um keeping it simple when sugar is combined with fiber it's actually not that bad for your body so eating fruits in moderation is actually not a problem i would first try to stay away from all added um sugar high fructose corn syrup and start leading labels the way we discussed now another point that i want to make uh primarily to patients with chronic pain or people who are overweight for a long time getting rid of sugar is basically um changing your body composition and that may take weeks so i would be very patient i would expect results in three to six months if that comes earlier um definitely it's a positive surprise and i would make small changes and then keep on going with that and uh, i hope this um this um video was helpful uh in the next videos we're going to talk about other ways and you the patients can uh help themselves to get better generally helping yourself to get better is always good rather than being passive and relying to a specialist to help you and um, we appreciate your help and support. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Uh, please uh, send us uh, your questions through email or through fax. Um, thank you again. My name is Edward. I've been a patient of Dr. Mongolians for quite a while. And through his help, I, is, I'm able, I was able to become gainfully employed again. Without him, I would still be in severe pain and not have a job. Hi, my name is Dora, and I've been coming here for about four years. And um, when I started coming, I was in a lot of pain. And since I've been here, Dr. Mongolian and his staff has really helped me manage my pain. I thank God for allowing me to come and be introduced to Dr. Mongolian. Without him, I'd probably still be in a lot of pain. Hi, my name is Sherry Hall. And since I've been coming here, um, I've been able to get up, do my dishes, um, do other things that I was never able to do until I started seeing Dr. Mark Golan. And today I am 138 pounds lighter and I'm using the walker and I'm not in a wheelchair and I'm tickled to death. Thank